as aid trucks have made it through to displaced people in Gaza, many of them are saying they need the Israeli bombing to stop. We don't want aid. We want to return to our homes. Enough with the killing of our children and slaughtering us. We can't sleep neither during the day nor at night because of the shelling and the misery we are living in. Enough. We do not have patience anymore. We are drained. We don't feel human anymore. I left home without taking anything except this shirt and pants I have on. The aid they brought for us is nothing but a small amount of what is needed. And in southern Israel, preparations are now being made for evacuations to Eilat. Al Jazeera's Teresa Bo is there for us. Uh, Teresa, what sort of scale are we talking about here? Well, I'm here in Eilat. This is right next to the Red Sea. This is a tourist destination that's now been overwhelmed with thousands and thousands of people being evacuated to this place because it's safer from the rockets that are coming from Gaza. You can see that several of the shops around here are open now. There's some music playing, but still people are coming to this part of the country, mostly evacuated from the southern part of Israel, surrounding areas from the Gaza Strip, but also from northern uh, Israel, where people are are fleeing the latest fighting between Hezbollah and the Israeli military. The government has evacuated around 200,000 people all around the country, but not everything is going as planned. We've heard lots of reports, for example, that uh, some of the evacuations were halted in Kriyat Shimona, that's in northern Israel, because there were not enough hotel rooms. People were uh, brought here, and they're staying in many of the hotels that you can see right behind me. Around 60,000 people were brought here. The mayor of uh, this city is saying that they do not have any more rooms, that they need assistance from the federal government. Uh, they're also saying that if people continue to arrive here, it's going to, the city is going to collapse. Uh, they also, we've been hearing reports that there could be a tent city, not far away from where I am right now, for 60,000 people. It would have uh, medical facilities. It would also uh, have a school, for example, if the situation continues to escalate. Uh, Teresa, you talk about potential escalation. I know tensions have already been running high. What's the mood like on the ground there now? Well, there's lots of tension on the ground, not specifically here because it's considered to be a safe area, but people are still afraid, they're still angry, they're still in shock about what happened. We've been talking to many of them and many support a ground invasion with Gaza. They want uh, the Israeli government to be done with Hamas, with the uh, Islamic Jihad, among others. But at the same time, earlier today, we were in some centers where they're distributing clothes to those who had to flee. They had left everything behind and they're living uh, here right now. And also there's a sentiment that some people do want peace. They're saying that it's time for something different to happen mm -hmm. in Israel. I think that what's extremely interesting that is happening here is that the Israeli government is trying to keep the morale high. Uh, they're trying to tell people that they're going to win this war, that this situation is going to be over soon. But when you talk to people on the ground, Nobody knows exactly whether that will happen. They feel afraid, they feel threatened, and many are saying, and many have told us actually, that they blame uh, President Benjamin Netanyahu. Teresa Bo there on the ground for us with the latest from Eilat. Thank you, Teresa.